This is Sunbelt Conference Football on ESPN. Hello and welcome to Monroe, Louisiana at Malone Stadium. Graham Doty and Manny Michelle, happy to have you with us. And Manny, we could not ask for a better day for weather. Oh, great weather. 72 degrees, winds are about 10 miles an hour. Great day on the bayou. Huge game today. Both of these teams sitting at first place in their divisions and taking a look at the standings across the Sunbelt in both the West and the East Divisions. Taking a look at the East Division, you see Georgia Southern on top, 7-1 overall, undefeated, 4-0 in conference play. And on the other side, in the West Division, in Sunbelt play, tied for first place, ULM, the Warhawks at 4-4 overall, 2-2 two and two in conference play. And, Manny, huge game today for both of these teams with first place on the line. Oh, no doubt. I mean, these both these teams are going to get after each other. Lot, lot on the line here. They're four and four, uh, two and oh, two and two in conference on the west, uh, four and zero oh conference on the east. So the winner kind of gets gets their way to, to the championship. Taking a look at some of the key players for this afternoon's contest. First for Georgia Southern and Manny. What really gets the Eagles' offense rolling is their quarterback, Shy Works. Well, Shy is kind of the uh, straw that makes the drink, so to speak. He can get vertical north and south in a hurry he can stick his foot in the ground he's got great ability and not only is he good but he looks the part too and defensively for georgia southern keep an eye on one of their talented cornerbacks kendall vildor the corners have been their best uh position so far this year and kendall of course has four picks he's got a bunch of breakups he was conference player of the week last week he's really been one of the reasons why they've been so successful this year Taking a look at some of the key players for ULM this afternoon. Marcus Green, what a weapon he is for the Warhawks. Yeah, Marcus can score at any time of the game, at any position. He can return kicks. He can return punts. He'll be in the backfield some. They'll motion him on speed sweeps. Georgia Southern better know where he's at at all, all times. On defense. Defense for ULM, senior linebacker David Griffith has had a really special season. Griffith, Griff has been been like that since we got here a couple years ago. And now, of course, now that uh, he's had several games with 10 tackles plus, he's a physical player, an emotional player, and he'll get him going. Two teams in first place will battle it out this afternoon at Malone Stadium. We'll step aside and come back with kickoff in Monroe, Louisiana. Welcome back to Malone Stadium in Monroe, Louisiana. It's Military Appreciation Day this afternoon between ULM and Georgia Southern. Had a wonderful flyover, but first let's take a look at how these two teams stack up with each other. Just taking a look at Georgia Southern, by far leading conference, or the Sunbelt Conference with rushing yards with 278. Evenly matched for both of these teams. Georgia Southern just won the coin toss and decided to kick it away to ULM. Kicking it deep, it's Tyler Bass. 49 kickoffs this season for Bass. 33 of those have been touchbacks. Marcus Green and Marquise McCray back deep to return the kickoff for ULM. Both dangerous players that can uh, really, really can make it happen back there. You know, Marcus Green with the four touchdowns on special teams a season ago. Bass drills this one out of the back of the end zone. And we'll have a look for the first time this afternoon at the ULM offense. Caleb Evans, the quarterback under the controls of this Warhawk offense, the 6'2 sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. Had a big year season ago, starting to come on as of late for the Warhawks heading into this contest this afternoon. There's head coach for ULM, Matt Viator in year number three, 10 and 19, spent a decade at McNeese State, tied for most wins in program history at McNeese State. So Evans will throw on first down. He's got his tight end, Peterson, wide open for a first down. Peterson knocked off his feet at the 41. And Manny, we thought we'd see the tight ends involved That's right. against Georgia Southern. And on the first play of the game, they go right to Josh Peterson. And that's exactly what we talked about during the week on the off them RPOs. So Josh Peterson hauls in the first catch of the day, good for 16 yards. So first and 10 for the Warhawks from their own 41. Here's a quarterback run for Evans, who works his way to the 45. That's, a, that's what we call the bypass play. He just reads that in, you know, and uh, he keeps it or gives the ball. To Marcio Reese in on the stop. Reese, senior linebacker with 38 tackles on the season. 
was the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week back on September the 3rd. Movement before the snap. This will be a five-yard penalty against ULM. Warhawks average six penalties for 48 yards. Number 12. Well, these are drive killers, you know. Pre-snap and post-snap penalties, you know, those are things you can control. Coaches are always harping on it. So this makes it second and 11. A lot of substitutions here for Georgia Southern after this penalty. ULM now from their own 40. Evans hands it off to Derek Gore. And Gore rumbles this way for a short pickup, a gain of two. The force third and long. Well, Georgia Southern went to their uh, third down package or down earlier because of the down and distance, and now, now uh, it's third and long, so look for their cover two. Like they, they love to do cover two with some Tampa two on third down. ULM this season on third down, converting 41% of the time. Evans launches one deep. He's got McCray out there, makes the catch inside the Georgia Southern 20. <clears throat> what a connection. Caleb Evans to Marquise McCray. It's a great throw. 50-50 ball, and you know Georgia Southern elected to blitz there, so they went against a little of their tendencies. They brought the middle linebacker on delayed blitz. And ULM will try to go tempo. This has been an area this season for ULM where the Warhawks have not been as successful as they would like to be, as we have time called on the field here. But in the red zone this season, ULM just 22 of 32 for 69%. Big spot coming up here for ULM on the opening drive of the game as we have a timeout called on the field with 13.29 to play in the first quarter. We got an injured Georgia Southern defender down around the ULM sideline. It's Baker, the sophomore safety, with four tackles on the season. I believe he was in on the stop after that reception by McCray. If you're looking at Georgia Southern's head coach in his first full season, Chad Lungsford took over a season ago late in the season. Georgia Southern close strong, winning two games under Chad Lungsford. Nine and five during his time as a head coach for the Eagles. He is a native of Georgia in his 10th overall season at Georgia Southern. And what a job he's done so far this season. He really has, you know, and the biggest thing he's talked about is, is just making it fun again. You know, I mean, that's that's uh, that's what he said on his first team meeting. Hey, let's let's have fun playing the game. And, you know, that's what kids want to hear. You know, they want to take the chains off. They want to let it loose. If they make a mistake, so what? Line up and play the next play. And, uh, you know, it, it's a fine line for that. So Baker getting helped off the field, and, and you hate to see that, and hopefully – He'll be okay for Georgia Southern. But something to watch, especially in that secondary moving forward the rest of this afternoon for the Eagles with Baker unavailable for the time being. Well, you know, i tell you the, the, the biggest thing was that third down. I mean, they expect to see cover two. The, the, uh, Coach Sloan blitzes them a little bit, and they connect on the 50-50 ball. So that's part of it, you know. That completion, by the way, to McCray, 41 yards. That's a season long for him. So the Warhawks in the red zone. Play action for Evans. Now he will take off and run. He's got some room, and Evans scrambles out of bounds inside the 10. The second is short. And Manny Evans can do that with the legs. He is second on the team in rushing yards this season with 418 for ULM. Yeah, he's got deceptive speed. And, uh, you know, it seems like every time he does tuck it, you know, if he gets, gets north and south, he'll gain yards with it. He's, he's over six foot three, so he's really dangerous with the football. I'll call it first and goal. The ball's at the six. Evans keeps it, and Evans stops around the five to bring up second and goal. Bill Evans with the quarterback keeper. Brinson in on the stop for Georgia Southern. Another one of the cornerbacks to watch this afternoon for the Eagles. This is a Georgia Southern secondary, which has been fantastic this season. They really have, and they've, they've, they've gotten some zone eyes, is what Coach Sloan said, compared to man eyes. Second and goal. Evans with a quarterback keeper. Evans at the goal line. Bangs his yep. way in the end zone for a touchdown. They love that play on the goal line. 
Quarterback draw. So the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, takes one in for a six rushing touchdown on the season. And it's the start that ULM wants. They are really tough. Caleb Evans with a touchdown run from five yards out, his sixth rushing touchdown of the season to put ULM in front six to zero. The assuming extra point was blocked by Georgia Southern. It just looked like ULM was just not on the same page, not a clean process on that extra point. No, not at all. It was almost like it was a bad snap count. So ULM in front six to zero. That was a seven play drive, 75 yards. It took two minutes and 35 seconds. Wesley Kennedy and the Jade Thompson are back deep for Georgia Southern. Jacob Meeks will kick it deep for ULM. Meeks this season, 38 kickoffs, 17 of those have been a touchback. They really like this guy Meeks because of, because of his leg. How big of a weapon is it on kickoffs just to have somebody that can drive one out of the back of the end zone? Well, I mean, anytime you can get him backed up, the statistics obviously for driving the length of the field, or smaller, so that, that's been big. Looks like he kicked it short here. And Georgia Southern will return one. That was Kennedy on the return out to about the 24-yard line. And we get a look at this high-power Georgia Southern rushing attack. First drive of the afternoon. That was Webster in on the stop for ULM. So in the opener, we talked on Georgia Southern quarterback Shy Works and what a season he's having for the Eagles. Yeah, he really has. I mean, triple option, and, and he makes it go. And, uh, I mean, they have all the faith in the world in him, so we'll see what happens. And we will see a lot of different rushers this afternoon for Georgia Southern. Here's a handoff to Garrett, and Garrett, not a lot of room off that right tackle. Short pickup on first down for the Eagles. Beasley in on the stop for ULM. Well, they started out with three backs, what we call 30 personnel, and they just ran uh, they ran load option and gave the ball. It might have been midline. So Manny, as a former defensive line coach yourself, when you play an offense like this, what's the biggest thing a defense needs to focus on? Uh, just their responsibilities. Who has the dive? Who has the quarterback? Who has the pitch? And and if you if you don't do that, then it's it's, it's bad news. Second and nine for Georgia Southern. Wirtz fourth in the Sun Belt this season in rushing yards. This time hands it off to Wesley Fields, and Fields plows his way across the 30 to bring up third and three for the Eagles. Marcus Hubbard in on the stop for the Warhawks. Yeah, third and three, you know, the offense is ahead of the chains, and that's what you want to do if you're uh, on offense is get to where you can, you can make it easy third downs. But on defense, you know, you want to be a little longer on third and three. Here's a look at what Georgia Southern has done on third down this season. Just 38%, kind of unusual for a team that loves to run the football. Definitely. Maryland I formation here as Wurtz will pitch it. And a lot of room here for Wesley Fields, who attains the first down for the Eagles out across the 40. Brought down by the safety, Austin Holly, the sophomore from Gladewater, Texas. They ran lead option, so the safety's got to show up in the alley. Here you see Fields, the senior, native of Georgia. 77 <coughs> players on this roster for the Eagles from the state of Georgia. Penalty marker down after the play. Here's our lead official this afternoon, Offside. Henry Parker. Defense, number 58, penalties decline. Result of the play, first down. Another pre-snap penalty has declined a little bit. Donald's had uh, a few of those over the years, just lining up off sides. He's got to get his eyes inside, see the ball. So first and 10 for Georgia Southern from their own 42. Logan Wrights, the new running back in the backfield. First carry of the afternoon for Wright. Works his way to around midfield. And Manny Logan Wright is a player that the Georgia Southern coaching staff pretty high on, just a freshman. He's from Jacksonville, Florida. Yes, he has. You know, they run, they have about four backs, but the coach coached the best the other day, talked about him, and was very pleased with the year he's had, and, and they they really excited about his future. Picked up six yards, second and four for Georgia Southern. Wright stays in there, right over 200 yards on the ground this season. 
with a pair of touchdowns. Here's Kennedy. Kennedy off the right side, picks up a first down as he's tackled out of bounds and a flag is thrown. This may be a late hit on Austin Hawley. Looked like Austin might have horse collared him a little bit, and he had a man getting across there, so he's got to he's got to get there. It's speed sweep, and he, he's got a man, so he's got to go. After the play, personal foul. Number 15 on the defense. 15 yards at the end of the run. First down. Didn't say if it was a late hit or a horse collar, but either way, it's a 15-yard penalty against ULM. But, Manny, that is Wesley Kennedy, and coaching staff told us on Thursday they wanted a little bit of juice in the backfield, and Kennedy has been that guy to provide that spark for the Eagle offense. Yeah, he's got the most explosive plays on the team, I think with a 12 or something like that, 20 yards or more, and they, they think he can go with it any time he touches it. Garrett and Wrights in the backfield here for the Eagles. And it is a toss to Anderson. The receiver has some room off the right side. He spins, he's out of bounds. He runs for a first down. That's actually the first carry this season for Darion Anderson. They had reverse going, the defensive end saw it, but he just got outrun. Got chased out of bounds by Marcus Hubbard. So Georgia Southern getting everybody involved on their opening drive this Saturday afternoon. Georgia Southern in the red zone and the Eagles have been lights out in the red zone this season. 93%, 27 to 29. Here's a handoff to Monteo Garrett. Not a lot of room, a short pickup, got a couple. Ran what we call split zone. And that back on split zone, he can cut it back or he can stay front side on regular zone. So he just kind of reads what happens. Does anything scare you more as a defensive coach? Or what, what do you look for the most in an option offense like Georgia Southern? Blocking the house on the perimeter. Because if that happens, it's bad news. So they got to really defend blocks. On second and eight, Logan Wright again, muscles his way up the middle, works his way inside the 10-yard line, brought down by the senior linebacker, David Griffith. Third and three. This is a spot where Georgia Southern is comfortable with, third and short. It is. It's got to be a little longer than that, especially with the statistics you've seen on third down. You know, they're not as good as you would think, but, you know, on these, on these situations, you know, you bet the house. These two teams did not play a season ago. First meeting in two years. ULM scored on the opening drive of the game. The Eagles marching down the field here. Third and three. Handoff. Not a lot of room there to work with for Wesley Fields. And the Warhawks get a nice stop on third down. That looked like Beasley. Sam Miller and Shaw in on the stop. Lawrence Shaw, the junior from Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, he's done a lot of good things this year. Field goal. Here comes the field goal kicking unit for the Eagles. Tyler Bass has been perfect this season, 11 for 11. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is deflected off of the uprights, and that's the first miss this season for Tyler Bass. Well, they're probably as surprised as I am because he's been nothing but perfect all year. Big stop by the defense He was ULM. One of, he was one of only three kickers in the FBS to be perfect. Not anymore. Misses the chip shot field goal. So we'll step aside, and when we come back, ULM will have the offense first and 10 from their own 20 when we return to Malone Stadium. Rather, we'll, we'll keep it here. We'll keep it here with the offense coming back out on the field. So, Manny, this is the ULM offense. Last time they had the football, methodically moved the ball down the field. They look sharp on their opening drive. They have, and, you know, it's historically with Coach V's tenure, if they start fast, they usually have good results. Over the middle to Green, an explosive play for Marcus Green. He's off to the races. 
and nobody will catch Marcus Green. An 80-yard touchdown pass, Caleb Evans to Marcus Green, and the Warhawks now lead 12 to zero. Well, that's what we talked about. They had to know where he was gonna be at all times because as you can see, if he gets it in space, a lot of times it's, it's, it's history. Touchdown. Wide open in the middle portion of the field. Marcus Green, his longest reception of the season, his previous was 79 prior to that. He's got the gold boxing gloves on and everything as the extra point, it's up and it is good by Greg Ford. So with 6.43 to play in the opening quarter, ULM in front of Georgia Southern, 13 to zero. Welcome back to Malone Stadium. An 80-yard touchdown pass. Caleb Evans to Marcus Green. Puts ULM in front of Georgia Southern, 13 to zero. And maybe that's something we kind of thought the Warhawks would attack the middle of the field and so far two explosive plays in the opening quarter. Yeah, that, that's the RPO and, and, and uh, Coach Sloan talked about guys that had to fit the run, had to be run fitters and ones that didn't have to be on the pass. So they got to work that out and make an adjustment. Kickoff by Jacob Meeks is returned by Georgia Southern. This is Kennedy on the return up to the 15-yard line. Great coverage, 15-yard line. You can't ask for better than that. Travion Webster in on the stop on special teams. So here's Georgia Southern, 638, first quarter, trailing by 13. Last time the Eagles had it, they were able to move the football. Just Tyler Bass missed a chip shot field goal. Looked like we had a penalty marker after the kickoff return. Number 19, excuse me, number 29 on the return team. Well, Matt there'll Stinson. be there'll be no panic Touchdown. with these guys. They've been there, done that, and you know they've won seven, eight games for a reason. So they're going to do what they do and and, uh, and and just be patient. Long game. That is the first penalty against the Eagles this afternoon. They are one of the least penalized teams in the country. Just average five penalties for 39 yards a game. That is fewest in the Sun Belt. That's their first today. So this drive will now start from their own eight. Handoff up the middle, working his way to about the 10 yard line. And on the stop, Darian Ford. Another carry for Wesley Fields. Yeah, Darian's a senior from uh, Starkville, Mississippi. He's, he's played a lot of snaps over his uh, years. Wesley Fields, he's a guy that's been banged up lately, and especially in fall camp for Georgia Southern. He's been dealing with a groin injury as of late. Here's another handoff, this time going nowhere. Short pickup. That was actually Garrett's in on the carry to force third and about nine. Mason Hussman in on the stop for the Warhawks. Now this will be interesting because they're bringing their third down package in. Of course, Georgia Southern runs it 80% of the time. So let's look for quarterback draw here. Eagles have third and seven from their own 11. One for two so far in the opening quarter on third down. Wirtz, the pitch, some room off the left side, dropped at the 15 is Garrett. Garrett is a couple of yards shy of the line again. Jabari Johnson with a nice open field tackle. A lot of praise for Jabari Johnson by the defensive coaches for ULM, the freshman from right here in Monroe, Louisiana. Well, you know, third down, they went lead option and Jabari made a tackle in the open field and gets them up short, so that's two stops for ULM defense. There you see the dangerous punt returner, Marcus Green. He does have a 71-yard punt return for a touchdown earlier this season. First punt by Miguel Bowerly. Marcus Green calls for a fair catch at his own 41. 438 remaining in the first quarter. ULM in front 13-0 over Georgia Southern. Offense off to a hot start for the Warhawks. We'll see what Caleb Evans and company have up their sleeve when we come back. 
another look at the nice defensive play. Jabari Johnson, the freshman from Monroe, Louisiana, with a nice hit to force the punt. Matt Viator sees his Warhawks in front, 13-0 in the first quarter. ULM starts this drive, empty set for Caleb Evans. So far for Evans, he's a perfect three for three passing, already 137 yards passing and a touchdown. Also has a rushing touchdown. Brought it back, that looked like McCready brought back in the backfield and ran counter. Lost a yard. It's one thing that ULM offensive coordinator Matt Kubik did tell us. He wanted to let Deer Gore, Austin Vaughn kind of get a breather here and there. So guys like Marcus Green and Marquise McCray, he'll put them in the backfield every once in a while. Absolutely. And you just saw that and it was count they pulled the guard to tight end. Derek Gore in the backfield for the Warhawks here. Tyler and Lamb in motion, and again, another flag before the snap. This will be another penalty against the Warhawks. Ball start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. On the left guard, Devin Jackson. Three yeah. penalties for 25 yards in the opening quarter for ULM. Two of them are pre-snap, you know, just, just no reason for it. So this makes it second and 16. Ball pushed back to the 35. Hand off to Derek Gore. Gore across the 40. Brought down by Logan Hunts. Hunts, what a career he's had. The senior from Sandersville, Georgia. Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Week back on October the 1st. He had nine tackles and three sacks against Arkansas State that weekend. That's big time there, especially against them guys. Had a fantastic career for Georgia Southern. Second team on conference a season ago when he had five sacks to lead the Eagles. Big play here. It's third and 11 for ULM. A clean pocket for Evans. Launches it. He's got a man a wide open, coverage. and he puts it on him, and it's dropped in the red zone. R.J. Turner would love to have that one back. Had a busted coverage, and they had a chance to go three touchdowns just then, and R.J. just dropped it. He may have been surprised of how open he was. Probably was. First point of the afternoon coming up here for ULM. Jared Porter, freshman, 35 punts this season for Porter. He's averaging 42 yards a boot. Wesley Kennedy back deep for Georgia Southern. Only seven punt returns on the season for Kennedy. Fair catch it. Brings it in at his own 22. So 306 remaining in the first quarter. ULM in front 13 to 0. That may be a play that we'll have to circle and come back to. RJ Turner wide open and a costly drop. Oh, no question, you know. You can't have foul balls in football. I mean, that's a chance to get get ahead of three touchdowns and especially against a team like Georgia Southern that as successful as they are is running the football and putting up points on the board. I feel like that's a phrase you've said a lot throughout your coaching career. No foul balls in football. <laughs> no doubt about <laughs> it. No doubt about it. So here comes Shy Wirtz and company. First and 10 for the Eagles from their own 23. So far for the Eagles, just 59 total yards. Words will drop back to foe. Now we'll try to take off and scramble. And he picks up four yards on first down. Kerry Starks in the area to force Warts to scramble. Well, they tried to flood the boundary all that time on, off the motion, and they had a three-level route, and they were covered pretty good, and Words ducked it and got what he could out of it. What have you seen so far from the Eagles offensively in the opening quarter? I think they're just trying to figure out how they're playing, uh, how ULM's playing them, and, and, and they'll adjust from there. That's the thing about them option guys. They always got an answer. Second and eight. Wirtz will pitch it. Room off that right side, and Fields has the first down for Georgia Southern. Works his way to the 40. Built down by... Donald Lewis Jr., the junior from Monroe, Louisiana. Here's another look at the first down run by Fields. See, they just wanted to get it on the edge there because Donald gave Donald Lewis gave him a, a give read and he just pulled and pitched it. So that was a call double option in my opinion. 
Right and Fields in the backfield. Pre-snap looks like must have been movement by Georgia Southern. Well start. Offense. Number Another one. penalty on the Five Eagles. First down. That's their second one this afternoon. That was actually Kennedy that was about to receive the handoff before the penalty. Well, coming into this contest, ULM had the bye week, which always helps, especially when you play a team like Georgia Southern that runs the offense that they do. And Georgia Southern, an emotional win on a short week against a ranked Appalachian State team. Yeah, and that's one of the things Coach DeBest talked about. He figured ULM would have a different wrinkle or two how to play him, so he's trying to figure it out right now. Another flag is thrown. This time Wurtz throws it. He gets nailed as he releases the football as it is brought in by Devarius Bargnair. Picks up a good portion of those yards back. Got 13 yards, but we'll wait and see what the penalty is. A little variation of their RPO, so to speak. Long conversation. On the penalty, here's Jeremy Parker. Illegal shift. Two guys on the offense in motion at the same time. So many for a team that is the least penalized in the Sun Belt. Georgia Southern shooting themselves in the foot in the first quarter. They sure are. And, then, you know, anytime you get pre-snap penalties, you know, one of the things Coach Lunsford talked about the other day is how they emphasize not having those, and that's, that's three of them already. Yeah, he was telling us on Thursday they take pride in, in what they do. you got to take care of the little things, and, and you can't have small penalties like that, especially before a snap. So it's now first and 20. Ball marked at the 30. And Wirtz hands it off the middle to Fields, and Fields plows his way across the 35, still not down before finally taking out at the 37. Picks yeah. up eight yards. They're given the give read, so they got to tackle the got dive, and then and they're not going to let the quarterback beat them as far as on true triple option. He's, his reads are going to be give uh, give uh, reads, so we'll see what they try to do. If they want to get shy on the edge, they're going to have to run load option or something or lead option, something like that. That was David Griffith then on the stop. We touched on him in the pregame. Fields the only back in the backfield here on second and 13. Wirtz again will throw. Now we'll try to scramble. Not a lot of room as he takes a shot at the 36. Lost a yard. Marcus Hubbard came up with a big hit. Looked like they had a spy on him also. How important is that to have on a guy like Wirtz? Well, it is. he's the best athlete on the field, so you can see 14 was spying him and limited the game. That takes us to the end of the first quarter, a first quarter in which ULM finds themselves in front 13 to zero. Big third down coming up for Georgia Southern when we return to Malone Stadium in Monroe, Louisiana. Back after this. To Malone Stadium in Monroe, Louisiana, 13-0 lead for ULM. First touchdown, five yard touchdown run by Caleb Evans, his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Second touchdown was an 80-yard touchdown pass. Evans to Marcus Green. So here's Georgia Southern on third and 14. And Wirtz, another flag is thrown. He's taken down all the way back at the 30. We'll wait and see what the penalty marker is, but Kerry Starks got to Wirtz in the backfield. Had a big time sack. Fourth down. That's that's a big time sack. Of course, they had to decline that penalty. That's three possessions in a row. So it's uh, you know, Coach DeBess is figuring it out, and Coach Collins and the company they're doing a great job defending the uh, run and pass right now. Second punt of the afternoon for Bowerly. Bowerly's first punt went 44 yards. Marcus Green, the return man, at his own 35. 
So far, ULM defense has come to play. Two teams in first place. Marcus Green watches it bounce. And inside the 30 takes a very friendly Georgia Southern roll down at the 24. Always tough when you let the ball hit the ground. So just underway in this second quarter. 14-38, 13-0 lead for ULM. And Manny, what, do you, what have you seen so far from the Warhawk offense? Well, they've been pretty explosive. They hit two big RPOs, and then the, uh, the third down one with R.J. Turner dropping that pass, it, it could easily be 20 to nothing. So I've really been impressed with them the times they've decided to throw it. I mean, they hadn't covered them yet. Warhawks start this drive from their own 24. And they start with a run to McCray. McCray breaking some tackles as he works his way to the 31, picking up eight yards. Yeah, Marcus, besides, Marcus McCray is the second fastest guy on the team, and the fastest guy on the team is Green. And we've seen both guys touch the ball a lot so yeah. far in this first half. Absolutely. Get it to your playmakers. Put them in space. We'll call it second and three. Here's a throw over the middle. Green again. Green down the sideline, and Marcus Green will take it in for ULM. His second touchdown of the afternoon. Same thing, RPO, slant. 69-yard touchdown pass. Caleb Evans finds Marcus Green. And ULM in front, 19-0. to That's a big-time football play. Caleb is really feeling it right now. As Craig Ford... Comes on to attempt the extra point here for ULM. It is up and it is good. What a start for ULM. 69-yard touchdown pass. Evans finds Marcus Green. A two-play drive that took 40 seconds for ULM. Warhawks in front, 20 to zero. Welcome back to Monroe, Louisiana, Malone Stadium. ULM leads Georgia Southern 20 to zero and Manny 69 yard touchdown pass to Marcus Green. The RPO is working. It's working and they're hitting them where the linebackers ain't no more. So the safety's got to screw them down and the corner's got to squeeze it. Graham Doty and Manny Michelle, happy to have you with us. Warhawks in front 20 to zero. I think a lot of people Tuning into this game and seeing this score now with the Warhawks in front, 20 to zero. Both teams in first place as Meeks kickoff will be returnable here for the Eagles. Big collision at the 21 on the return. Well, that was Thompson with the hit and Kennedy on the return. So far for Georgia Southern offensively, just 76 total yards, 64 on the ground, 12 through the year. And the ULM defense has played well so far. Yes, they have. And, uh, you know, three possessions, three punts, one fourth down stop, uh, missed field goal. So you can't ask for none better. And the score could easily be 27 nothing. Well, one thing the ULM coaching staff told us, Isaiah Phillips, a, a running back, a freshman running back that is redshirting this year for ULM as Wurtz keeps it in, is tackled for no gain. But Phillips is redshirting. He, he was the quarterback in practice the past couple of weeks, and a lot of praise from him for the ULM coaches just getting the ULM defense ready for this Georgia Southern offense. Yeah, they said Phillips really bought into it and, and put a lot of stress on the defense with his speed and everything. So obviously that's helped. They had three extra days of practice. Right there, the quarterback kept it. They had a little game on where they took the dive and scraped the quarterback, the linebacker for the quarterback. Second and 10 for Georgia Southern. Going back to Phillips, that's a player that ULM is excited for the future that he holds in the running back position. Here's Garrett off the right side. Short pick up to bring up third and seven. Yeah, split zone look. Third and long again. That was Tyler Johnson in on the stop. Georgia Southern offensive coordinator is Bob DeBess. He's in his first season, spent six years as the offensive coordinator at New Mexico. ULM coach is very familiar with Bob DeBess. When he was at New Mexico, ULM played New Mexico. 
That was back in 2016, a big day for the Lobos. They won over ULM that day, 59 to 17. New Mexico had 476 yards of offense that day. Here's a huge first down run for the Eagles on third and six. That was Fields with the carry, moves the sticks for the Eagles, and that's what they needed. They did, and ULM had their third down defense in there, and Coach DeBest thought he could pick up six, and he did. So right here for Georgia Southern, with the way this offense is built, do you do anything differently or just stay true to your game plan down 20 to zero? I think you stay true to your game plan because you know how good your defense is and you just you just keep doing what you do. It's not it's no panic time yet. Here's a toss in traffic and this play is blown up. A huge loss on the play. Great job by the D-back pressing, pressing the edge and on the stock block and making a big loss. It's the junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, Nick Ingram making his presence felt as he blew up the running back, Wesley Kennedy. Nick Ingram is a guy who's getting more playing times. He had a big day against Georgia Southern two years ago. He had 11 tackles. Yeah, Nick's their utility guy in the, in the secondary. He can play uh, a few positions, corner, buck, safety. So he's had to do it all. It's a loss of six, so second and 16 for the Eagles. Wurtz looks to throw, one course one. He's got his man Anderson, and Anderson can't come up with it, but a late flag is thrown. And this appears to be pass interference. Austin Hawley, the first one to Anderson. Well, if it's interference, it's a good penalty because he was wide open. So instead of a 40-yard gain, you give up 15. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. 15 yards, previous spot. First down. Hardest thing against option people is that play-action pass. You got to read your keys, and whoever's got the ride pass is what I used to call them, has got to take it. That was Mike Collins, who didn't care much for that call, the defensive coordinator for ULM. Well, wasn't a good thrown ball, but but they, they got to get their head around better, I guess the refs said. So first and 10, Eagles from their own 46. Hand off to Fields, and Fields with room up the middle, works his way in ULM territory, brought down by Hunter Smith. Hunter Smith's a redshirt freshman, and He's had to move up in the depth chart a little bit because of some of the injuries the linebackers have had. But he's from West Feliciana and uh, uh, in Louisiana, and they really like him. Yeah, this is the time of season for both of these teams. Just everybody's kind of banged up a little, a little bit. Hunter Smith, one of the guys, getting some playing times and meaningful football in November. Second and four. It's another handoff, and again, not a lot of room up the middle. The Warhawk defensive line standing strong to force another third down. Yeah, they tried to run split zone there, and the end got underneath the split and made a good play. David Griffith again on the stop. We called his name a lot in this first half for the Warhawks. He's got five tackles. On third down in the first half, Georgia Southern two for five. They've, they've run the option on the two of the third down, so let's see what they do here. Here's Fields. Fields with a nice gun move, and he's trying to shake free, but what a nice open field tackle. And from the spot, he's short. That's Marcus Hubbard, the senior, with a huge tackle in the open field to force fourth down. Yeah, Marcus did a good job screwing that thing down, and they limited the game. He fit right where he needed to do. And fits where it's all, where it all is in run, run football. You gotta fit the right spot to make sure the game's down. Watch, Georgia, for, watch for the hard count. Georgia Southern appears to be going for it. That's Fields in the backfield. Georgia Southern just two for seven on fourth down. Here's a first down run by Wesley Fields to move the chains. So the Eagles down 20 to zero. Go for it on fourth down and convert. Yeah, they went in over there and just ran the zone play. Based it, mano on mano. Georgia Southern, opening drive of the game for the Eagles. 
They were able to march down into the red zone, just missed a short field goal. First time they've been in ULM territory since their opening drive. Here's a handoff to Kennedy. Kennedy with some room. Stopped at the 37 by Kerry Starks. Starks, a sophomore, is having himself a good ball game this afternoon defensively for ULM. Kerry's a very active player, and, and, he, and he always has been. Got a player down on the field for ULM. We'll take a timeout with him. Second and six for Georgia Southern when we return. We'll be back. Welcome back to Malone Stadium. ULM leads Georgia Southern 22-0. Good start defensively for the Warhawks in the first half, Manning. Yeah, they really have done a good job of limiting uh, Georgia Southern in, in explosive plays, and I think that's the difference so far. That was a big tackle in the open field on third down to force a punt. There was a tackle by Nick Ingram moments ago for a six-yard loss. Coming out of the timeout, Wartz will keep it on second and six and run for a first down for the Eagles. That was the lead option we've been talking about, getting him the ball on the corner in a hurry. Griffith and Johnson in on the stop for ULM. So offensively for Georgia Southern so far, just 86 yards rushing in the first half. And remember, this is a team that Tops in the Sun Belt, averaging 276 on the ground per game. That's Kennedy in the backfield. It's a high snap, handoff to Kennedy, and Kennedy yeah. trying to turn the corner and knocked out of bounds. He's got some really good speed. He got the oh, edge. The end's got to set the edge there. It was Marcus Hubbard that shoved him out of bounds. Yeah. Gain of three, second and seven for the Eagles. Really a good job considering they didn't set the edge and good job by Hub knocking him out of bounds. Kennedy can fly. He got some he got some fast twitch fibers in his body. He was one of the players that ULM head coach Matt Viator was told us he was one to watch for sure for Georgia Southern on offense. Yeah, speed speed scares any coach. Especially if you're a defensive coach. <laughs> Second and seven. It's another high snap to Wirtz. Rolls out to the right. A lot of room, and Wirtz will be tackled at the 22, a couple of yards short of the line to gain. Austin Holly with the tackle. Another third down coming up here for the Eagles, who are two for six this afternoon on third down. Yeah, what's it, third and two, third and three? Look for them to try to get Wirtz to football. Give him an option to work with. Yeah, maybe load option. Let's see what happens. They ain't one back. Which is Wesley Fields. Might run split zone instead. So on third and two from the 22, it's a handoff to Fields, and Fields is stopped short of the line again. Looked like a trap play. Hunter Smith, the first one to Fields. And decision time for Georgia Southern. Last time they attempted a field goal, remember they missed it short. There you see Hunter Smith with the stop to force another field goal attempt for Tyler Bass. Missed one from 26 in the first quarter on the opening drive of the game for the Eagles. Trips formation up to the top but he elected to kick it. Kick by Bass, it's up and it is good. So Georgia Southern finds themselves on the board with 5.40 to play in the second quarter. ULM in front 20 to three. Welcome back to Malone Stadium. Chad Longford is happy to see his Georgia Southern Eagles strike on a 38-yard field goal by Tyler Bass. That was a 14-play drive, that 53 yards. It took over eight minutes as Georgia Southern gets ready to kick it away here. But, Manny, time of possession so far. Georgia Southern, 19 minutes, 22 seconds. ULM under five minutes. Well, you know, ULM's hit explosive plays, and, and, and uh, Georgia Southern's tried to grind it out a little bit, and they've missed one field goal. And, Credit ULM's defense for holding them twice inside the red zone. 
Kick off by Tyler Bass is juggled momentarily by Marcus Green. Marcus Green takes it to the 15. Marcus Green hasn't had a lot of opportunities to return kickoffs this season. That time, Green and McCray almost collided with each other. Yeah, they had a communication problem, which so, that shouldn't happen. So here comes the ULM offense. So far, 240 yards of total offense in front. 20 to 3, wearing their special P40 uniforms on Military Appreciation Day, fourth time that ULM has worn these uniforms. Josh Johnson running back in the backfield. Offensive coordinator Matt Kubik did say Johnson will get some carries today as Evans again finds RJ Turner. Evans in Georgia Southern Territory, knocked out of bounds inside the 30. They are biting on those RPOs. That was basically one-on-one -on -one versus the corner, and the corner's eyes are in the backfield. In the first quarter, R.J. Turner had a costly drop. Not going to drop this one as he puts the Warhawks deep in Georgia Southern Territory after that completion of 57 yards. If that was cover two, that safety should have been over the top. Here's a handoff to Josh Johnson, and Johnson works his way for a short pickup again of a yard. Ty Phillips in on the stop for Georgia Southern. So for Josh Johnson, he's a junior college transfer from Cahoma Community College in Mississippi. He was the National Junior College Player of the Week at Cahoma Community College. He ran for over 300 yards in a game and had four touchdowns. In nine games, he ran for over 1,000 yards. Pretty know, good. Yeah, I know they got him late in August, and uh, they're happy to have him. Fresh legs as well, Matt Kubik told us. Evans again will throw. Fires incomplete to bring up third and eight. You could see that safety was screwing down there in a hurry. He kind of broke that pass up there. Obviously, that's something they've been talking about on the sidelines. Only the second incompletion for Caleb Evans. He has six completions for 270 yards. All big plays for the Warhawks in the first half. No question. ULM one for two this afternoon on third down. Evans tries to set up a screen at Turner. Turner working his way through the traffic, fights his way inside the 20, and this will depend on the spot. I think it's going to be about third and one and a half, two yards. Or fourth, fourth, excuse me. Jesse Liptrot in on the tackle, the junior from Atlantic Beach, Florida. They're going to go for it. So ULM going for it on fourth and short. They bring in Derek Gore, the senior running back from Syracuse, New York. Staying aggressive. ULM five for 10 this season on fourth down. Georgia Southern has a player late getting out on the field. Jeremy Parker says reset the play clock. It's a fourth and one. It's a toss to Gore. Gore on the edge, has the first down. Gore stays on his feet inside the 10-yard line. How about that? The toss to the big fella, Derek Gore. Yeah, the old zip toss. I hadn't seen that one in a long time, and obviously that was a different wrinkle for Georgia Southern. Evans under center with a toss to Derek Gore. Josh Johnson back in the game for ULM in the backfield. Johnson on the season for ULM. Eight carries for 31 yards as Gore gets looked at on the sideline. Here is Johnson. Johnson bangs his way to the goal line and he's tackled just shy of the end zone. Really good job on him. He broke a tackle on the line of scrimmage and kept on churning. Joshua Moon with the tackle, but you can see why the coaching staff likes Josh Johnson. Yeah, talking to him in August, they really had high hopes of him, and now he's got the scheme down, and now obviously he's playing a little bit. Stays in the backfield, second and goal from the one. Back to Johnson in the end zone for the touchdown, the first of his career as a ULM Warhawk, 26-3 lead for ULM. Impressive drive. They took a little clock this time off of the one bit. They still had a big explosive play. Great job. That was a seven play drive, 86 yards, took two minutes and 51 seconds. As Craig Ford is on 
for the extra point, but that was a nice response by the ULM offense after Georgia Southern kicked the field goal. Well, that was a great answer, and to beat a team like Georgia Southern, you're going to have to keep your foot on the neck because they're not going away. they won a lot of games over the, over the years. Extra point, it's up and it's good by Craig Ford. So 2.49 left to play in the second quarter. ULM in front 27 to three. What's jumped out to you so far? Well, just being that they keep being aggressive and they understand the urgency of it all. And, and also by going forward on fourth down, you, uh, you understand that ULM respects Georgia Southern a whole lot because they know how good they are. So I, I like how they're being aggressive and going for it all. That was a big play, Evans, to R.J. Turner, a gain of 57 yards to really set this up. The one-yard touchdown run, Josh Johnson takes it in, the first touchdown of his career at ULM. 27-3 lead for ULM. Boy, the backs of ULM all seem like they're thick and big, you know, and strong. Yeah, all built around 5'10", 230, 240. Yeah, Hard to bring down. Yeah, really are. Kennedy and Thompson back deep here for Georgia Southern. Kickoff by Jacob Meeks. This will be short and a fair catch is called. So the Eagles will have first and 10 coming up from their own 25. Starting to see that more and more as the season went on. You know, earlier in the year, you didn't see a lot of fair catch. Do you like the new rule change? Well, I know what they're trying to do uh, with the concussion protocols and all that. So it's not a bad rule. It's not a bad rule. But, you know, I'd, me being a defensive guy, I'd rather be on the 20 than the 25. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're Georgia Southern here, Manny, what are you thinking here offensively? 249, three timeouts to work with. Yeah, I got time. Let's see what happens. I think they'll run a little lead and low to see them get on the edge a little bit more because it's only 249 left. Well, they open up this drive with a completion for a nice pickup, a gain of 12 yards on first down for Georgia Southern. That was Bartnair with the reception his first this afternoon. Yeah, missed tackle. You know, could have limited it to seven yards, but you miss a tackle. So the clock stops and you get a first down. Should have been a seven-yard gain. Nice moves. Nice moves. Got past the freshman safety, Jabori Johnson. Pickup of 12, first and 10 for the Eagles from their own 37. Another throw, this in traffic, a flag is down as it's incomplete around midfield. Couldn't tell if he was looking for his tight end, Ellis Richardson. Here's the call. Offense, number one. So another penalty on Georgia Southern. That's their fourth. Remember, they only average five a game. Well, obviously, uh, someone covered somebody up because it was num uh, it was on number one. So he was either supposed to be on the ball or off the ball, but he covered them up. And, uh, you know, they're not in their comfort zone right now. They're trying to say, hey, we can throw it. And they, maybe they can, but this is not what they want to do. Well, coming in in this contest, Georgia Southern dead last in the FBS passing yards per game with only 74. Wesley Fields, the back in the backfield. On first and 15, the ball pushed back to the 32. Works. Throws a dart to Anderson, and Anderson loses the football. Picked up by the Warhawks. Convoy out in front down the sideline. That's Austin Hawley. Wow. Takes it all the way inside the 20-yard line, and ULM at the doorstep with 2.04 remaining in the second quarter. Georgia Southern's probably hoping for a replay and to say it's incomplete, but I think he had it and may have an athletic move already. Let's see. It'll it'll be close if they look at this. Anderson caught it and got hit immediately. There's a different angle. Right now the ULM offense is on the field. They're ready to go. One step, two step, ball coming out. It looks like a catch to me. Scooped up by Holly. Another look at it. Right now, looks like they will stand with the call on the field. Let's see. The ruling on the field is a catch and a fumble. The previous play is under further review. So now Jeremy Parker will 
Take a look at this one. And the, the thing, it's called on the field a catch and a fumble. So it has to be overwhelming evidence to overturn that. That's right. It's got to be undisputable or indisputable, whatever, however you say it. But to me, that's the whole key. And, and, and you know, understanding what the rule exactly says, indisputable evidence. So, again, easy scoop up by Holly. Marbles was the one with the hit on Anderson. One, this may be the best angle two. right here. See, it looks like two, two feet. Looks like he made an athletic move also after the two feet. Caught it. Two steps. One, two. There's your athletic move. And there's the strip. That's the way I see it, but I'm not the ref. If it stands, Marbles with a nice job to really punch the football yeah. free. Yeah, you know, and both teams do a, uh, a, lot, a lot of work on turnover circuits and things like that. Of course, Georgia Southern is plus 19 for the year, and this would be huge for uh, ULM because this would also give them a turnover, and that's something that also Georgia Southern's not used to having is They've only turned it over three times on offense. Yeah. Here's Jeremy After Parker. Review, the pass is ruled incomplete. There is no fumble. It will be second and 15. So after Please looking at that, the clock. officials feel that there is overwhelming evidence to yeah. overturn the fumble call. And so Georgia Southern catches a break. And you alluded to it. They are tops in the FBS with plus 19. That's right. In the country, only three fumbles on the season. So let's see if the Eagles can capitalize. It is third and 10. I'm trying to figure out why it's on the left hash. See if the officials move the football to the different hash. Put four seconds back on the clock as well. So 2.10 remaining. It's right. Third and 10. Wirtz steps up in the pocket. He will take off and be tackled well shy of the line again. Let's see if ULM calls a timeout. That was Starks again on the stop. Yeah, good retrace by Carey. He's having himself a fantastic first half. He is, and then, you know, his, t his uh, technique went to work on the, treated like that scramble like a draw, and he retraced his steps. So another stop by the ULM defense. Punt number three coming up here for Georgia Southern. It's Bowerly. Bowerly's dead Jack is the head coach at the University of Georgia swim team. Also was the head coach for Team USA women's swim team in the 2008 Olympics. Another fair catch is called by Green at his own 28. So plenty of time here for ULM offensively with 118 and two timeouts in their back pocket after that 32-yard punt by Georgia Southern. Be interested to see what they do. So what are you thinking here offensively? Well, they're pretty hot, you know, why not? <laughs> Stay with the RPO, it's working. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about it. I mean, they haven't, they've really been biting on the RPO, so. Let's see, Caleb's, Caleb's got a hot hand, so let's see what Coach V elects to do. Evan, seven for nine for 277 yards through the year. Two touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Yeah. Clean pocket here, launches one for his tight end, it and it's intercepted by the safety, Duncan, and Duncan works his way in ULM territory, dropped around the 37, and we got pushing and shoving, and this will be a flag against ULM after the play. Well, that's a critical mistake. You know, they would cover two, the safety's over the top. Caleb put too much air on it. Easy pick for the safety. Second interception of the season for Duncan. 13th as a team for Georgia Southern, tops in the Sun Belt. After the change of possession and after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 76, Louisiana Monroe, 15 yards, added to the return. That is number 76, first unsportsmanlike conduct, first down, Georgia Southern. 
Well, Jeremy Parker said 76. There is no 76. It's on Brandon Jones, the junior from Montgomery, Texas. But as you, as you said, Manny, a lot of air on that throw by Evans, picked off by Duncan, and you'll see it late here, the penalty after the play. Yeah, just, just not real smart. It's not real smart. Selfish. So Georgia Southern offensively now with 108 to work with in a pair of timeouts, or they're all three timeouts. And Wirtz will throw, looking for the end zone. He's got a target out there. What a throw, what a connection for a touchdown. A 22-yard strike to number 22. Rather, number 23, Mashad, with the reception. And Georgia Southern picks up their first touchdown of the afternoon. Well, good throw and catch. Good throw and catch, and Georgia Southern took advantage of the turnover, and there you go. Six touchdown pass of the season for Shai Wirtz. So the Eagles cash in after the turnover. And here comes the extra points for Tyler Bass, who is perfect in this department on the season. Snap is down, kick is up, and it's good. So the Eagles cash in after the interception on the very next play, a 22-yard touchdown pass, and we got another penalty marker on the field here. Offside, defense, penalty is declined. Point after is good. So the score sits at 27 to 10 ULM. Yeah, that's kind of what Georgia Southern was hoping, get a touchdown at the end of the half. Of course, they weren't planning on giving up one. There's the interception by Duncan. And again, remember the 15-yard penalty against the Warhawks to set up this 22-yard touchdown pass. The first touchdown of the afternoon for the Eagles. So now for ULM, decision time. Do you want to be aggressive with the 102 to work with and a timeout, or two timeouts rather, or just go on a halftime content with a 17-point lead? It just depends how Coach V feels. Uh, he might want to let, let Caleb settle down after that pick. But, um, you know, but what happens is now it becomes the most important part of the possession of the game becomes the open possession of the second half because it's back-to-back -back times they have a chance to score. About the only thing that this didn't work out with Georgia Southern is plan was they didn't expect to give up six in between the drives. Right. Out of the back in the end zone by Tyler Bass. So ULM will have first and 10 from their own 25 coming up with 102. And two timeouts to work with. Chad Lunsford in his first full season as the head coach has to like that response there for the Eagles capitalizing after the turnover. Yeah, you know, and, and talking to the coaches during the week, they, they said they're really good at putting things behind them. So this is just kind of ind indicative of what they've been talking about, whether it's day-to-day -day or play-to-play. -play. So I'm really impressed with that. You know, of course, you know Georgia Southern. Not, they're not going anywhere. It's a 60-minute game. Josh Johnson in the backfield. Quarterback draw. And a lot of room for Evans to work with as he is chopped down at the 34 short of the first down marker. Brought down by the linebacker, Rashard Bird, sophomore from North Augusta, South Carolina. They might see what they can do on this run play and then go from there. And off to Derek Gore with a first down run and Gore dropped at the 45 and another late flag is thrown. This will stop the clock with 34 seconds. Spalgery in on the stop. This penalty be interesting. Personal foul, face mask, defense, oh. number five. 15 yards at the end of the run. Now we're going First for a score now, Louisiana boys. <laughs> timeout. With <laughs> the 34 seconds, timeout called on the field by ULM. 
So one timeout left for the Warhawks, and, and there is the face mask on Baldry. Brought him down, so 15 yards, and again for Georgia Southern, the least penalized team in the Sun Belt. That's the fourth on the Eagles this afternoon, and that one hurts. Oh, now, now you know, ULM's going to be aggressive. They got 34 seconds. They got a timeout left, I believe. How many timeouts do they have left? Do you know, Graham? One timeout. One timeout left. left. Yeah. According to the scoreboard. So they got they got plenty of time, and they can make up for that bobo they made at the uh, other at the end of the last series. Yeah, after the interception thrown by Caleb Evans, oh. who's had a big first half. Yes, he has. Seven out of ten for 277 yards, two touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, and the interception. He's done a good job of not letting it bother him in the past. Evans, with all the time in the world, will throw, and nobody really close to it on that one. <clears throat> this will stop the clock with 28 seconds. Marcus Green, the closest receiver in the area. Well, this is what Georgia Southern really has done good at during the years, defend the pure pass. What ULM's hurt them with is, is the early downs on the RPOs. So they're kind of expecting pass and all that. So it'll be interesting to see how, how what happens here, especially in this three by one. Who's got number three up the pipe? There was a nice graphic of all the penalties and the time of possession in the first half. Quarterback draw for Evans dropped after gain of three by Logan Hunt. Timeout taken by the Warhawks with 22 seconds remaining. Still have a ways to go to get in field goal range for Craig Ford. He's been kicking well as of late for ULM. Coming off a season-long 43-yard field goal last week. So it's third and seven for ULM. And it'll be interesting to see what the Warhawks style up here. Go through the air, keep it on the ground. I think they're going to try to get points out of this just because of where they are out on the field. Now, as far as Ford kicking it, they, you know, they need to get to the meet, the 25 at least, because that's about his range, 43 yards, 44 yards. Which is his season-long last week, or last contest, I should say, for ULM against Texas State. So here we go, third and seven for Caleb Evans, who will set up a screen to Turner. Turner trying to work his way through the traffic, dropped after a short pickup at the 35 to bring up fourth down. Randy Wade Jr. in on the stop. They don't let it run out. ULM has one timeout to spare, and they will use it. So two seconds left, so you have a chance to attempt a long field goal or throw one in the end zone. They attempt a field goal. This would be 52 yards. Coach Viator told us range for Craig Ford is 50 max on the high end. Well, if they kick the field goal, it's probably going to be with another kicker. Or maybe the kickoff guy or something because... This won't be Ford's range. Right. Much, uh, so I, I, that could happen. Or they just, you know, throw a Hail Mary and see where, where the ball falls. Well, Craig Ford is the only kicker on the roster that has attempted a field goal this season for ULM. But Jacob Meeks is the kickoff specialist, and he definitely has the leg. I was watching him kick pregames, and he was kicking them from distances. So we'll see. So two seconds left. And a big first half for ULM in front, 27 and 10. Georgia Southern won the touchdown moments ago after the turnover. ULM hungry for points before the first half comes to a conclusion. Georgia Southern will get the football, by the way, to start the third quarter. So here comes the offense. The Warhawk offense will surpass the 52-yard field goal attempt. And we got a whistle and a penalty. This will be against ULM, so this will make the decision that more easier just to throw it in the end zone. Mm -hmm. 
Penalty number Ball six. Start. Offense, number 10. Please reset the game clock to two seconds. It's on the receiver, Gillespie. Yeah. yeah. Just, I know the coaches would be very unhappy about that. And now Georgia Southern will call a timeout. 30 seconds, timeout. Yeah, they're just checking to see who's on that weak side and one-on-one. -on -one. That looks like green down below to me, which that's what you want, you know. One-on-one -on -one coverage as well. So we'll see if ULM wants to continue their game plan. One thing, though, in this first half, ULM is averaging almost 14 yards per play. Wow. 14, Georgia Southern averaging four yards per play in the first half. Just been explosive plays has been the story of the first half for ULM. Well, they got a good plan, and, and they were going to see if, if if they could handle their RPOs. And so far, Georgia Southern hasn't. And, uh, you look you look like they, they've adjusted a little bit with the safety getting down there, but then they came back with the next series and hit R.J. Turner on a simple go route off, off an RPO. So, you know, the receivers at ULM are as, as good as anybody in the country. So, you know, Georgia Southern's got their hands full. Same formation here for ULM with green at the bottom of your screen. So you got the safety over the top with him. So that might have been what they adjusted to in the timeout. And Evans will launch one. It puts a lot of air on it. He's got Turner in the area, and it's broken up at the goal line. Nice job by the Eagle defense to prevent a late score. And the first half comes to a conclusion that sees ULM leading Georgia Southern 27-10. Step aside and be back with more from Monroe, Louisiana. Caleb Evans with the first touchdown run of the afternoon, followed by an 80-yard completion to Marcus Green. This one from 69 yards, the second touchdown of the day to Marcus Green. Josh Johnson, his first career touchdown. An exclamation point for ULM. 27 to 10 lead, Warhawks in front of the Eagles. Welcome back to Malone Stadium. ULM leads Georgia Southern 27 to 10. Taking a look at the first half stats. Rush yards favors Georgia Southern 104 to 71, but look at the passing yards. ULM 280 through the year in the first half. Time of possession favors Georgia Southern by a wide margin as well. What jumps out to you? Well, the big thing is the time of possession, but you know, two of those touchdown drives by ULM were one was a one play and the other one was a two play. So, you know, uh, I, I really think that 104 yards rushing off of 35 total plays is pretty good. U ULM up by 17. Third quarter coming up when we return to Malone Stadium. In the Back to Malone Stadium as we get ready to begin the third quarter on Military Appreciation Day. We had fighter pilots Josh Higgins and Zach Givens with a flyover before today's game. As Kennedy and Thompson back deep here for Georgia Southern. Here is Scoring plays, a recap. First touchdown of the day, a five-yard touchdown run by Evans. A big day for Marcus Green. Touchdown catches of 80 and 69 yards. A one-yard touchdown run by Josh Johnson, his first of his career. Touchback for Georgia Southern as we get set to begin. Quarter number three, ULM in front, 27 to 10. What was your biggest takeaway from the Georgia Southern offense after one half a play? Well, they just got stalled as they kept going down there. You know, they they got to get the quarterback uh, some some uh, carries. That's what I think. They didn't six carries, two yards. So to me, that's that's the biggest thing. I think Georgia Southern's going to try to do. Fields and right in the backfield here for the Eagles. And all over it is the defensive line for ULM. A loss of one. Laurent Shaw, the junior from Fort Worth, Texas, with a nice stop in the backfield. You know, he is an undersized nose guard, but he's got some big time quicks, and I know um, they're really happy to have him. Undersized is right, 5'11", 280, but he gets the job done. Yeah, he's, he's really, really strong. They say he's awesome in the weight room. 
So second and 11 here for Georgia Southern. Wright and Fields remain in the backfield. There's the load option I was talking about. And then ULM played it good that time. Chase Day with a big hit. You expect to see more of that in the second half? They're going to try to get him on the perimeter just because he's, he's such a, he's so electric. So that was the first time they tried it and they didn't get a, they didn't do it. So good job, ULM. Another third and long for Georgia Southern. The Eagles just two for eight on third down this afternoon. See if Shy Wirtz goes through the air. He's three for five passing this afternoon. Steps up in the pocket and tumbles down at the 23. Another stop for ULM. David Griffith, one of the first ones to him, along with Donald Lewis Jr., the junior from Monroe, Louisiana. So Georgia Southern goes three and out on their opening possession of the third quarter. That's two sacks for him, and that's against a team that doesn't throw the ball much, so that's not bad. Another punt coming up here for the Eagles. This will be punt number four for Bowerly. Marcus Green around midfield. This is a beautiful punt. Driving Marcus Green all the way back to his own 33 where he calls for a fair catch. 12.59 to play in the third quarter. ULM in front, 27 to 10. Georgia Southern goes three and out. Another stop by the Warhol defense, offense on the field when we return to Malone Stadium. And Viator sees his team in front 27 to 10 over Georgia Southern with 12.59 to play in quarter number three. Our first look at the ULM offense in the second half. Graham Doty and Manny Michelle, happy to have you with us. Two teams in first place. Handoff to Derek Gore and the senior Alabama transfer picks up five yards on the ground before he's brought down by the safety, Joshua Moon. Those are some tough yards. Gore's a tremendously dedicated athlete. I haven't seen a lot of him today. That was only his fifth carry, but he's been productive. He's averaging eight yards a pop. Yeah, he's, uh, he's raring to go. I saw him in the mall the other day, and he was pumped. <laughs> Second and five, Evans. With another handoff to Gore. Gore, a first down run for Derek Gore. Last year led the team in rushing yards, and he also had six touchdowns. He's approaching 500 yards on the season. Brought down by Randy Wade. Here's another look at the first down run for Gore. Tough break there on the receiver blocking Gillespie. Still on the field, though. Looked like it could have been a disaster yeah. for Gillespie. Evans will throw. He's got the tight end. Peterson catches it Great and takes hands. a vicious hit. Pops up and signals first down, whether that's Tyler Lamb with the reception. You know, they got two really good tight ends, and Tyler, of course, is from New Orleans, and Peterson, they, they roommates. They they get along good, and that's a, that's a really good job of just kind of Showing what Tyler can do with the ball also. Lamb only had one catch a season ago. That's his fourth this year. Duncan with the hit. He had the pick earlier. Play action for Evans, and it's almost intercepted again Passing by Bowdry. Yeah. Them, them foul balls are tough now. I know they uh, Georgia Southern's wishing they could have got underneath that one because, you know, Sometimes those foul balls, the next one's always deadly. Second and 10 here for ULM. At the Georgia Southern, 39. Eighth meeting on time between these two teams. Back on the ground, here's a quarterback keeper for Caleb Evans. Starts his way for a gain of four to bring up third and six. Joshua Moon in on the stop. ULM on third down this afternoon, just one for four. Get the sense this is a big play on their opening drive. It sure is. Of the third quarter. No Marcus Green on the field, though. On this pivotal third and six. 
Pressure for Evans. He avoids it, and he's got his target open. And McCray with a first down reception, forced out of bounds inside the 25. Well, they brought pressure, and they don't do it much. And Caleb was able to extend the play and hit McCray for in the out route. Third catch this afternoon for McCray. Might not have been pressure. Looked like a little pass game in the middle there. Kind of looked unusual at the like snap. Like a twist, yeah. yeah. Not a lot of movement. Back on the ground to Derek Gore. Gore plows his way to the 21. Well, ULM wants to run the football, and if you know anything about Matt Viator, he's always liked to run the football. So um, don't be surprised if, if Georgia Southern gets a heavy dose of it this half. Well, ULM, they might not have a superstar running back, but they have a set of guys that are all consistent and they all do a great job. They do, you're exactly right. And they, they, it's kind of running back by committee, but they, they know how to milk the clock also. One of those running backs is Josh Johnson back in. Play action to Johnson and back to the tight end and Tyler Lamb in the red zone here. His second reception on this drive. This is the chance. That was another play that uh, Coach Kubik talked about uh, doing during the uh, week. So, so far, they've, they've been able to do a couple things with the tight ends like they talked about. And so far, the tight ends as a unit with three receptions. In the red zone, ULM, first and 10 from the 12. Fake the give, Evans keeps it, and Evans at the five, chopped down around the three. What a pretty play that was. A fake to Marcus Green, tackled by Jesse Liptrop. Yeah, well-designed play, and of course, you know Green's going to draw a crowd. Wind up being quarterback sweep, fake the reverse. Here's another look at it. Long strides for Caleb Evans. Yeah. He's been effective on the ground. Another run up the middle. This will be good for at least a first down, yeah, and it is. So ULM is two for two in the red zone at the doorstep here. First and goal from the one with Derek Gore in the backfield. The gift to Derek Gore, and he's in the end zone for the first time this afternoon, and ULM increases their lead with 8.31 to play in quarter number three. They continue to keep uh, stepping on Georgia Southern's throat. What a drive, Manny, for the Warhawks. 11 plays, 67 yards, four minutes and 28 seconds, capped off by the one-yard run by Derek Gore. His first of the afternoon as the extra point is right down the middle. 31 remaining in the third quarter. ULM in front, 34 to 10 over Georgia Southern, thanks to a one-yard touchdown run by Derek Gore, his sixth of the season. Thirty-four ten lead for ULM. There's a completion to Tyler Lamb to really set up the Warhawk offense. Nice run by Caleb Evans to put him on the doorstep. Capitalized by a one yard touchdown run by Derek Gore in the scoring drive, 11 plays, 67 yards, four minutes and 28 seconds. Life is good on that Warhawk sideline. Yeah, they're excited and, and um, you know, it, it's interesting to see what, what kind of answer Georgia Southern will have right here. Hesitation on the return by Kennedy and Kennedy Brings it out to the 21. Could have been interesting, but he is able to take it to the 21-yard line. So right now, here comes Georgia Southern. 8.25 left in the third quarter. This is an Eagle offense, just 147 total yards. And this is coming after a dominating performance last time out for them last Thursday against Appalachian State. Yeah, Apps one of the best defenses in the country. and. Uh... So we got to see how they're going to respond here. Wartz appears to throw, launches it down the field, just misses his intended target, Anderson, to bring up second and 10. Wartz has thrown it a little bit more today than normal, but when you're down 
my 24 may have to start taking some shots here and there. Yeah, they, they're going to have to do that, and they'll probably still try to do it off of play action because, you know, they're so good at the run. And, you know, uh, I think you just got to continue to read your keys, keep it in front of you if you're ULM. Words passing today is three for six, 48 yards, and a touchdown. Right in fields in the backfield. Here is the talented freshman, Logan Wright. Not a lot there. Maybe picked up a yard. David Griffith again on the stop to force third and long. Another third down and long situation. Momentum is definitely on the Warhawks' side right now. David Griffith with a game high, seven tackles. And no Cortez Cisco. He's unavailable for this ULM defense this afternoon, and Griffith has picked up the slack there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, David's just such a good player, and, and uh, of course, Cisco can run, and I'm just glad he's playing good. Eagles two for nine on third down. Bubble Here's pass. A quick hitter to the near side. A lot of room out there, and staying on his feet and picking up the first down for Georgia Southern is Barton Ayer. On the Big first, first down for Georgia Southern. Second catch of the afternoon for Barton Air. Did a nice job to, to stay on his feet here. Broke mm -hmm. the tackle there. Those extra couple of steps. Able to pick up a first down for the Eagles. It might have been four down territory right there. This, you know, I don't know when coach is going to uh, think that it is. But we're getting to that point since the point spreads are 24 points. Wesley Fields with a carry. Wesley Fields with a carry. He's got 14 carries to lead the day for the Eagles. 63 yards on the ground. Brought down by Chase Day. Day, the junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Played well against the Eagles in the last meeting two years ago when he had 11 tackles. Yeah, Chase has been around a long time and, and a really, really smart player. Knows how to set the fronts. and He's getting healthy again, which is good. These two teams first played each other back in 1987 here in Monroe. ULM won that day 26 to 17. Haven't played a great deal throughout the years. There's another handoff to Logan Wright. Muscles his way for a first down run. Kerry Starks in on the stop for the Warhawks. Georgia Southern leads the all-time series five to two. Last played in 2016, Georgia Southern won by two, 23-21. Last time Eagles made the trip to Monroe was 2015, a big win for Georgia Southern that day, 51-31. Warhawks bring the heat, handoff off the right side, and room for Garrett, and Garrett powers forward for a gain of five, brought down by Chase Day again. Had some early penetration there, just didn't get him down. Seems like the Eagles are starting to click, running the football a little bit on this drive. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it'd be interesting to see how patient they are. Only touchdown drive took the Eagles over eight minutes to score. This is the seventh play of the drive here for the Eagles on second and five. This time, not a lot of room running right into the teeth of the defense. David Griffith again in on the stop, in on the area, along with Laurent Shaw and Jalen Beasley. Yeah, they're going to try to make the quarterback give the ball off of the read. Now, whether he decides to just keep it or not, again, what I talked about with the loaded option and stuff, to get him on the edge. It's a loss of a yard, so third and six. Eagles just converted 30% this afternoon. Wirtz will throw, he's under duress, and down he goes back at the 33. They'll Mike Collins pump. brought the heat and it worked. Brought double edge pressure. Jabari Johnson, the freshman safety who's been playing well as of late for ULM. You can see pressure coming from both sides. And you know, that's that's not what Georgia Southern wants to do. They're not used to protecting. They're used to working on boards and getting yards running the football. Fifth punt of the afternoon coming up 
for Bowerly. It's another good one as Marcus Green backpedals and makes a fair catch inside his own 25. So 3.46 to play in quarter number three. ULM up 34 to 10. Caleb Evans and company trot back out on the field. Line this afternoon for Evans. 11 of 17 for 315 to two touchdowns. Here's a look at the last sack by Jabari Johnson to force that punt. What have you seen from Johnson as of late for ULM? Well, you know, he's he's the fifth rated safety in the in the country. Uh, makes plays and he's just a he's he's just some people just got it and they the coaches tell me he's one of the guys that just got it. He's gonna be a great player for him. That was a nice back shoulder throw to RJ Turner, went up and snatched it. And the officials discussed it briefly on if he got his feet down in play, and it is ruled a completion to R.J. Turner to push the ball up to the 42. They continue to stay aggressive. Evans again plants his feet, throws. He's got a target out there, and it's intercepted. Second interception of the afternoon for Georgia Southern and a lot of room on the far side of the field. This is Jesse Liptrot who takes it in for the pick six. That could have changed the game as far as momentum is concerned. So Evans hung that one in the air a little bit and the junior Jesse Liptrot with his first interception of the season takes it to the house. Did a nice job to avoid Derek Gore and the tight end Lamb. Had a convoy, took it all the way in for the touchdown and Georgia Southern is going for two here after the 43 yard interception return for a touchdown by Liptrot. Got a timeout taken on the field with 3.15 to play. In the third quarter, ULM in front 34 to 16. We'll step aside and be back after this to Malone Stadium. Back to Monroe, Louisiana. 3.15 to play in the third quarter. ULM leads Georgia Southern 34 to 16. Eagles. Electing to go for a two-point conversion, trying to make this a 16-point deficit. Yeah, they're trying to make it a two-possession game. So if they don't make it, it's still a three-possession game. So it's, it, they don't lose anything if they don't make it. Wesley Fields in the backfield. Near side, the pitch to Fields. He's got the corner, and he takes it in for the two-point play. And now Georgia Southern only trailing by 16. A lot of time left in this contest. Just how quickly things turn just like that after the interception return for a touchdown by Liptrop. 57 yard pick six. The second interception thrown by Evans this afternoon. It's another throw you know he'd like to have back. Threw it off of his back foot. Yeah, it's a long throw. Yeah, long throw and, and, and his mechanics weren't good. And of course, Georgia Southern, you know. Plus two in the turnover ratio. That's what they've been doing all year. So they've kept them in the game. Both touchdowns are off of turnovers. Two point play, nice pitch on the edge. Wesley Fields takes it in. Make it a 16 point lead for ULM. So let's see how Caleb Evans and company respond after the turnover. Another takeaway for Georgia Southern. Now 14 interceptions on the season, most in the Sun Belt. Yeah. They Kick. got a next play mentality. Out of the back in the end zone, touchback. First and 10 coming up for ULM from their own 25. Evans is thrown for 334 yards. He is approaching a new season high. His season high is 346 in the opener in the victory against Southeastern Louisiana. Yeah, he's been very effective. He can't let the last play bother him. They got to just keep doing what they're doing. And of course, Georgia Southern needs to step up now. They got the momentum a little bit, so let's see what happens. 
So from the 25, it's a handoff to Derek Gore. Pops through a hole. Gore angles to the sideline. He crosses midfield, and Gore out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 40. Gage. Knocked out by Brinson. He, uh, Brinson took the blow at the end of the run there. Looked like Gore was very physical with him. He's a physical guy. Good answer there for ULM. It's a gain of 35 for Derek Gore. He's inching closer to the century mark this afternoon. Under three to play in quarter number three. Evans will keep it. He's got some room to work with, and Evans with a first down run and more brought down at the 24 by Brinson again. Really good read by Caleb. They tried to make it a hard double, and he kept the ball and was off, off running. Haven't seen a lot of runs for Evans in the second half so far, but he's over 75 yards on the ground. Yeah, it was a really good read by him. They brought a, they brought a blitz off the edge, and he pulled it, and there was nobody for the quarterback. Josh Johnson checks in. He's got a touchdown in this contest. Warhawks feed Johnson, and Johnson shedding some tackles off the right side before being dropped at the 16. Nice jump cut by the kid. You can see why they like him, especially with the fresh legs. Remember, he only entered this game today with seven carries on the season. Yeah. I think Vaughn might be a little banged up, too. So, I mean, they need him now, and they, he's done a good job of responding. Second and two. ULM trying to respond after the turnover. It cost them points. And Evans sweet. at the five, and Evans shoved down at the two. Possibly a touchdown saving tackle by Boultry. We've seen that a couple times, Manny. Quarterback yep. sweep and Evans done a nice job with that. You know, he has a good feel for that play. They've been they've been doing that play for several years with Matt, and uh, Matt's always liked that play. So uh, Matt Kubik, I'm talking about. And, uh, Back on the ground to Gore. Gore this time is wrangled down at the five, a loss of two. Rashard Bird with a nice play in the backfield. Good job by the linebacker there, plugging the hole and cre creating a negative play. Really big possession here for uh, Georgia Southern to hold them. At least hold them to three. Second and goal from the five. Evans will throw, slings it out to the tight end. Lamb, who is, rather that's Peterson, who's that's chopped down at the two. Peterson. So this will bring up third and goal. And ULM will have to snap it before the third quarter comes to a close. They've been running the dive pretty successful down here. Let's see if they continue to try to do it right before the quarter ends. Derek Gore in the backfield. He has a touchdown on one of those dive plays earlier. Quarterback sweep for Evans, and Evans will take it in the end zone for the touchdown. ULM back in front by three scores. What a great answer for ULM after that pick six. Derek Gore provided a fantastic block to free Caleb Evans, who takes it in for a second rushing touchdown. There's the block by Gore that helped allow Caleb Evans take it in. Seventh touchdown on the ground this season for Caleb Evans. Forward on for the extra point. It's up. It's perfect. 14 seconds extra remaining point. in the third quarter. ULM now in front, 41 to 18. And remember, this is a defense. Georgia Southern was only surrendering 19 points per game coming in in this contest this afternoon. That was second lowest in the conference. Uh, right, I know it. Them and App State have uh, been the two big defenses all year. And, and of course, uh, I'm sure the Georgia Southern coaches are, are scratching their head as, as much as everybody else. But uh, this is just one of them, take your, take your enemy out to the back, back woodshed and whoop them. Here's the quarterback sweep by Caleb Evans. This took it down to the two-yard line. Caleb Evans, just what a job he's done on the ground, Manny. He's got 77 yards rushing, 
This is a second touchdown to make it a 41-18 lead yeah. for the Warhawks. Well, on, on the season, Georgia Southern, the most total yards they have surrendered in a game, as you see the scoring drive for the Warhawks, it took over three minutes. Most yards Georgia Southern has allowed, 595 against Clemson. ULM today, 512. Wow. So they're approaching that territory. Wow. That, is, that is really incredible. And give ULM credit. They came to play, and, and the game's not over yet, of course, but Georgia Southern's going to have to get out of their offense a little bit more. They're going to try to stay in it a little bit, but they got to do some things that they're not comfortable with. Let me just say this. So expect them to start running some bubble passes, maybe quarterback draws, because they just don't have a lot of time. You know, you, there are three possessions down. So they got to get the ball back, and, and, and they can't eat the clock like they're used to doing. So it's, it's the worst answer for a triple option team coming from behind. Eagles start this drive from their own 25. Words passing, if you're wondering, four for seven through the year for 55 yards. Hands it off for a gain of four on first down. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. That sees ULM in front, 41 to 18 over Georgia Southern. Teams in first place, quarter number four coming up. Start of the fourth quarter at Malone Stadium, ULM in front, 41 to 18. Here's the pick six by the Eagles in that third quarter. Right now, the Eagle offense trying to find some answers. Just 167 total yards for Georgia Southern on offense. Words the triple with the pitch. This is Kennedy, the big play back for the Eagles with a gate of eight. Brought down by Ty Shelby, sophomore from Houston, Texas. That was a defensive end running in the alley. He can really run and he's very long. Ty's probably six foot four, six five. This brings up third and a yard for the Eagles. Wesley Fields, the running back. The gift to Fields, first down run and more up the middle. Wesley Fields has come to play today, leading the Eagles with over 70 yards on the ground. Just jump cut right there off the dive. Right now the Eagles just searching for points fast and in a hurry. Yeah, they have to change personalities. <laughs> they used to huddling and eating clock, and now the, the clock's their enemy right now. Their touchdown drive on offense, their only score on offense, took over eight minutes as Fields with a carry chopped down by Hunter Smith. Yeah, they had that one play drive off of the turnover at, at the end of the first half, and then, of course, the pick six. So the thing ULM's doing so good is they're keeping it in front of them. You know, they haven't really given up chunk plays except for the, off of the turnover uh, in the end of the first half. But that's the only thing that they've really given up a big chunk. On second and eight, the toss to the man in motion. That's Kennedy, and Kennedy driven out of bounds after he picks up about four. Jabari Johnson again in on the stop. Yeah, good job by Kennedy being patient with the run, and, and good job by Johnson just running the alley. The corner did a good job of not losing the edge. Big third down here for the Eagles, who are four for 12. Third and five for Georgia Southern. Fit, uh, fields the tailback. Wirtz will throw, Wirtz under duress, and down he goes at the 34. Another sack for ULM, Darian Ford with the stop. 
That was their fourth sack for the Warhawks. And of course, they there. I think they were second in the conference in sacks coming into this game, and with 23, so they might move ahead. Big day for this ULM defense. Another punt here for Georgia Southern as Marcus Green, standing at his own 30, will call for a fair catch and bring it in at his own 21. 11.58 to play in quarter number four. ULM in front, 41-18. Darian Ford, the big fella with a huge sack to force punt numbers five for Georgia Southern this afternoon. ULM offense when we return. 41-18 lead for ULM. Warhawks starting this drive from their own 22. Over 500 yards of total offense for ULM. Green in motion, handoff to Derek Gore, and Gore runs for a gain of four. Derek Gore with the carry for ULM. ULM doing a little bit of everything. Pretty balanced today for the Warhawks. 337 passing over 180 rushing. Yeah, that's his back. That's that's what Coach V likes to do. He likes to be very balanced. And like I said, he loves to run the football. Second and seven, back on the ground to Gore. This time he's going backwards. Stays on his feet, though, as it takes a host of Georgia Southern players to finally bring him down. Yeah, that was a great run by him for three yards. I mean, he must have got hit 15 times. <laughs> Joshua Moon finally brought Derek Gore to the turf. Third and five, ULM. It's third and five here for the Warhawks. Gore stays in the game. ULM three for six on third down. See if Evans goes through the air. Evans over the middle, deflected and incomplete. Looking for his tight end. Pass is tipped, intended for Josh Peterson. Look at this stat for ULM under head coach Matt Viator. Whenever the Warhawks lead after three quarters, 10 and 0, leading at halftime, 9 and 1, up 41 to 18 as we enter the fourth quarter. Unbelievable. Yeah, they, they, Matt's always like to have good starts, and I think that's what ULM is really good at when they get out the gates. Punt coming up here as Kennedy back deep for Georgia Southern. This is only the second punt of the afternoon for Jared Porter's first one was good for 37 yards and this Blocked. one is blocked and it's scooped up by Georgia Southern in the end zone for a touchdown. touchdown. Well, Georgia Southern is finding ways to stay alive and hang in there. They are. Touchdown on defense, touchdown on special teams. Thompson is the one that just reached his hand in there and blocked it. This is how winning teams do, you know, they find a way and, and you look up and now all of a sudden they block a kick and it's, it's, it's a two possession game again. That's Ben's Josue, the linebacker in the right place at the right time to pick it up and score. As Bass on to attempt the extra point, still a lot of time lot of left time. in this game. As the extra point by Bass, it's up and it is good. So Georgia Southern making things interesting in quarter number four. The block sets up a touchdown for Josue. 10.37 left in quarter number four. We'll be back to Malone Stadium. Welcome back to Malone Stadium. 41-25 lead for ULM. Georgia Southern with a pump block. On special teams, there's your starting quarterback, Shy Wartz, for the Eagles. Five of eight passing, 58 yards, and a touchdown. But the big thing right there, Manny, minus 18 yards rushing for Wartz this afternoon. But Georgia Southern still finding a way to hang around with tons of time left. Good teams do it. They, they, they figure out a way how they, to stay in the game and you know, and of course it's 10:37, and Wirtz could still make some plays. But I mean, three plays have kept Georgia Southern in the game: the pick six, the block punt, and the, and the other picks. So 
Let's see what happens. Let's see if ULM can answer like they've been answering off of, uh, negative plays the last couple series. Yeah, get the feeling this is an important drive for ULM. Come away with points one way or the other. Derek Gore, the running back in the backfield. They'll start this drive with a handoff to Gore, bounces it outside, and another fantastic run by Gore as he's escorted out of bounds by Brenton and Gore over the century mark with that run. Yeah, he did the same thing the series before on the first uh, play of the drive. A, a big explosive play. That one was for 20 yards. I think the series before was a 30 or something like that. He's got 106 yards on the ground after that 20-yard carry. First and 10 ULM from their own 45. Gore again. Gore pounds his way towards midfield, picks up four. Bird in on the stop for the Eagles. Had a linebacker come off the edge that time and waiting for the quarterback, but they gave the football. Georgia Southern really trying to come up with a stop on defense. Eagles have been good this season, playing teams in the West Division, 3-0 on the season against teams from the Sun Belt West Division. Josh Johnson now back in, in the backfield here for ULM. Handoff to Johnson, and Johnson picks up two to force third and short. Johnson in on the stop for Georgia Southern. This could be the biggest third down of the game right here. Third and three for ULM. Three for seven on third down this afternoon. Johnson remains in the backfield. Movement at the line of scrimmage, and Evans will take a could shot. A free free play. play down the far side of the field over shoots Gillespie. But this should be a five-yard penalty and a first down coming up for ULM. Might have multiple flags here. So maybe a five-yard penalty on Georgia Southern and then a pass interference as well. Offside, defense, penalties decline. Pass interference, defense, number four, 15 yards, preview spot, first down. Another costly penalty on the Eagles. That's their fifth. See, and that just changed Georgia Southern's mode on offense because now the clock keeps ticking. So if, the, if, you, if you continue to run the ball now, instead of them punting, they could have ran the regular offense being a two possession game. Now the clock keeps ticking. If they get the ball at four and a half minutes on the two possessions, they have to do something they're not comfortable with. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And Georgia Southern has dominated time of possession this afternoon. 31 minutes compared to 18 for ULM. Yeah, yeah. You know, ULM's kept it all in front of them, and of course, uh, they've scored quick, so. Josh Johnson takes the handoff, his sixth carry of the afternoon. Season high, career high for him. Runs forward for a gain of three. Be about second and seven, huh? Ian Bush in on the stop for Georgia Southern. So Derek Gore checks back in. Those two have been a fantastic duo this afternoon as ULM has rushed for over 200 yards. Yeah. They've done a great job. 546 yards of total offense as well for the Warhawks. Really big play here. Evans keeps it. Evans up the middle. Evans. Tackled a yard shy of the first down. Duncan, who had the interception earlier, with a big hit. Well, just really good read by Caleb, you know, and then they, 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 uh, Caleb planted his foot and got vertical, and it was a third and one. Third and one, and you can tell the Warhawks being patient on this drive, milking the clock. Absolutely. They snap it with 11 on the play clock, and Gore chopped down short. 
of the first down. So now decision time for ULM. Deshaun Cooper in on the hit. Deshaun Cooper and Ian Bush, number 95. Looks like the Warhawks may wind the clock down, call a timeout, think about it. With under seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. That's probably what they'll do. And, and I guess they got to think about if they trust their kicker enough to hit a field goal. And, he, of course, he's gotten better the last couple of weeks, but... You know, he struggled early in the year, so it just depends on that. Probably if he kicks a field goal, it it'd probably ice the game. If they do attempt a field goal, it would be from 41 yards as timeout is taken by Matt Viator with 6.38 to play in the fourth quarter. Fourth and one for ULM when we return. Back to Malone Stadium, 41-25 lead for ULM with 6.38 remaining in the fourth quarter. A 16-point lead for ULM. Here's a look around the Sun Belt. Big game at Troy. Troy leads Louisiana Lafayette, middle of the third quarter there, 26-10. Troy currently right behind Georgia Southern. And Louisiana Lafayette tied with ULM in first place. So really handful of big games today. How about Arkansas State dominating South Alabama? Offense is on the field on fourth and one. Evans comes up underneath the center. See if he does a hard count. And another timeout taken by ULM. And that is their third and final timeout. So now Coach Viator will have to decide if he wants to settle on a 41-yard field goal attempt or indeed go for it. So special teams why for ULM yeah. this season. At the beginning of the year, it was an adventure. Craig Ford was just three of seven to start the season. And then he's kind of found a rhythm. He has made his last three, including a season long 43 in the last game for ULM against Texas State two weeks ago. Well, I'm just glad I'm not sitting in Coach V's chair. Because, <laughs> you know, being a defensive coach my whole career, I'm, I'm, you know, me and them kickers, we, we have an understanding. Let's stay away from each other. So, uh. And who knows, he may be having flashbacks towards 2016 in the close game. Yeah, that's right. They blocked it at the end of the uh, game. But uh, let's see. Let's see if he uh, he's, he's hit it the last couple games, so let's see what happens. There you see Georgia Southern's remaining schedule. Big one next week against Troy. Offense on the field on fourth and one. Evans this time fakes the toss, and Evans trying to pick up a block. Can he get the edge? And Evans runs out of bounds after picking up the first down. What a run by Evans. Just, just pure ability right there because Georgia Southern had it stopped. He was patient just enough yeah. to get the edge and the first down. Just the second time we've seen that play as well. Really good play call, and then just his ability made the first down because Georgia Southern did a good job with him. And that's what that's why you recruit. You know, an old coach told me one time it ain't about the X's and O's, it's about the Johnnies and Joes. So that's why you recruit. And what a player Evans is. Sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. One of nine kids in the family as he hands it off to Derek Gore for a short pickup. Evans, the big year last year with 30 total touchdowns, got to go to the Manning Passing Academy in the offseason. Said he walked in a room and the Manning family was there. Was starstruck a little bit. Whoa, there's the whole Manning family. I bet. What a career he has had so far for ULM. Just a sophomore. Brother, talented quarterback at Virginia Tech. Yeah, his one of his brothers was on the practice squads on one of the teams last year. And uh, but the thing I like about Caleb today is he's made a couple of mistakes, but he, you know, next play mentality, and uh, so far so good. Evans again keeps it, and Evans shakes free at the 15, still on his feet. A flag is thrown. Evans spins down inside the four. See what the flags are. It was down the field some. Could it be a late hold? Or I didn't see a face mask, but maybe it was. Ty Phillips was the one in on the stop. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number two. Yeah. 
yeah. 10 yards. That's Second on in. R.J. Turner, the receiver. So this will push ULM back. Here's a look at what is upcoming for ULM. A couple of road games, South Alabama, Arkansas State, and then finish the regular season with your in-state rival, Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah, it ought to be interesting. And, you know, those those are all games that, that they're both teams are evenly matched, and it's kind of what you like about the Sun Belt Conference. Anybody can beat anybody on any Saturday. So after the penalty, it's second and eight. This time Evans will throw, flips it out to Turner, who drops an incomplete. Looked like Turner was more focused on catching it and making sure his feet were in play. Yeah, he got turned around a little bit. I, I, it was kind of a weird deal. He was falling inside. Or... He had, I think he had more room than he realized. Yeah, he to thought work he was with. in the sidelines. But that stops the clock with 432. Which is big for um, Georgia Southern. You yeah, know, because really they is. got they got to start they got to start burning their timeouts at some point. But now you're getting in a situation here. If ULM doesn't pick up any yards here, do you want to attempt a field goal? And right now ULM doesn't have any timeouts, and a delay a game yeah, will be declined. The, they'll kick the field goal if if they get stopped here. And they just don't want to take a sack right here. So, you know, if they decide to throw it, they want to get rid of it. If, if nothing's there, throw it out of bounds, line up and kick the field goal. Be interesting what they call here. You know, they've been really successful at quarterback draw this game. Yeah, a lot of quarterback sweeps for Caleb Evans. 98 yards on the ground. Here's There's another draw. quarterback draw. Picks up a block, and Evans loses the football inside the 15. It looks like ULM was able to recover it. Marcus Green. One of the smallest players on the field jumps on top of it. Wow, that could have been a disaster. Would have been huge. He needs to protect that football more. See how, how he's got it. It's a good job getting on the ball by the Warhawks. Usually Georgia Southern, they usually come up with that. Looked like a Georgia Southern defender was in a prime opportunity to recover, but Marcus Green with the fumble recovery. Graham Doty, Manny Michelle, happy to have you with us. A first place showdown between ULM and Georgia Southern. It's been exciting to say the least. Georgia Southern making things interesting here late in the fourth quarter. Well, they have, you know, and they found a way to stay in the game, even though, to be honest with you, the game should be a route. But they, they, they blocked the punt. They've had a pick six. They had another uh, pick that set up for a touchdown, and, and they're still in the game. But, you know, just I know uh, Shaw's dying to get back on the field to, to do some damage. So let's see what happens after this field goal. There was the next three games for Georgia Southern, hosting Troy and then finish Coastal Carolina and Georgia State. Field goal attempt, the kick is up, and it is good. So Craig Ford has connected on his last four field goals, and he makes this a three-score lead for ULM, a huge field goal of 32 yards by Ford. Yeah, that one, that one, uh, that one made it tough for Georgia Southern because now it's three, that's three possessions, two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. So, tough, tough odds. So 4-16 remaining in the fourth quarter. ULM now in front, 44-25. to 25. Take a look, just kind of a recap of how we've got to this point as far as total yards go. Just time of possession, Georgia Southern leads that 31-24, to 24, but 572 yards of total offense for ULM today. Only 175 for Georgia Southern. We're really incredible. 572, 175. I mean, that is just that's just a great, great plan by the offense and the defense. That is a new <clears throat> season high, by the way, for ULM. The previous was 554 in the season opener against Southeastern Louisiana. It just um, seems like offense is starting to click at the right time yeah, for ULM. And 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 you know, coaches around this league know that they are dangerous when they really are hot. So, you know, next few weeks should be interesting. Fair catch called by Kennedy, so the Eagles will have it first and 10 from their own 25. 
story of this game has just been big plays on we, both sides. Yeah, ULM, Marcus Green, two yeah. long touchdown receptions, and then Georgia Southern, a pick six, another interception that set up a touchdown, and then a touchdown on a pump block. Yeah, a little right. bit of everything. That's right. That's right. You know, you could easily say that the game was decided with seven seven plays because, I mean, all them big plays, whether they were on Georgia Southern side or ULM side, they were damages. So just depends on how you look at it. Logan Wright in the backfield. Quarterback draw. And Wurtz with some room. He's got a first down as he slides at the 35, picking up 10 yards. And that's the first time he's been successful with that today. I know they've tried it two or three times. Look at Georgia Southern just throughout the season. 93% in the red zone, but just one trip in the red zone this afternoon. Wurtz drills one in to his target at the 44. Picking up nine yards. That's Colby Ransom, the junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, with his first catch today. ULM just got to keep it in front of them and make them earn it. On second and one, high throw. It's caught at the line to gain. This will be a first down. Clock will stop with 3.32. Shy Wirtz, he is capable of throwing it. Honorable mention, Sunbelt a season ago set the Georgia Southern freshman record with 929 passing yards. Passing Hall of Famer Tracy Ham's record that he set in 1983 or 886. Really good breakup by Marcus that time on the slant. Look for the sluggo route, which is a slant and go coming up. So they run two slants in a row. They might be trying to set them up with a slant and go. Here's another look at it. A great play by Hubbard. Second and ten for the Eagles. There it is, a slant and go up top, up down below here. Saint and overshoots yeah. his intended target. Yeah, but you called it. They were setting it up. Just could not capitalize on it. Third and ten on the way for Georgia Southern. That was Mark Mashad. Yeah. The target. He had the touchdown reception earlier in the first half. Well, they haven't been able to protect them on third downs today. So let's see if they can do it this time and get. Because Georgia Southern's got great receivers, got great athletes. They just don't throw it much. Wirtz on third and ten. Back on the wheel, he looked for him. Got a lot of room up the middle. Yeah. Wirtz with a first down run on third and ten. He picks up 11. Brought down by Ty Shelby. He tried to throw the back on the wheel, and then they didn't have a spy like they've had it late earlier today, so he was able to scramble for the first. Prior to this drive, Wirtz minus 18 yards rushing on the ground. Black on the play. Finally in positive territory with three. Got a flag on the play. Yeah. False start. Offense. They're really lucky because ULM wasn't ready. Because they, they substituted a defensive end from the far hash late, which is a big no-no, I know. You want to substitute when it's in the middle or the or the hash closest to you. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's tough to get on and off the field in hurry-up situations. And I'm sure that's what Coach V is trying to convey to his coaches right now. It's the sixth penalty of the afternoon against Georgia Southern. Ball around midfield. Throw yeah. off the mark looking for his tight end Richardson. See now's a good time if you want to sub you could you can because it's it's incomplete. The clock's not running. Eagles do have two timeouts to work with. 2.32 remaining in the fourth quarter. ULM's doing exactly what they need to do. Keep it in front of them, make them earn it. Don't worry about the yards, just don't want to give up the chunks. On second and 15, Warhawks show blitz. They back off, and Wirtz will dump it down to his tight end, Richardson. And Richardson tries to get out of bounds and can't do so. Clock is running, 2.19 and counting. 
Well, they got plenty of time, so they can burn a timeout if they want, but they luck not to here. Tackle by David Griffith. He's got a game high eight this afternoon for ULM. So third and six. Three man front. Over the middle, off the mark. That was a frozen rope. Yeah, it was. Right on that one, stopping the clock with 159. It's tough on Wirtz right now. You know, he's run the ball so much today, whether it's quarterback draws and things like that. We were playing an opponent years ago, and the um, quarterback hurt us early, and, and it, we, we were lucky because he, he was gassed the rest of the game, so he couldn't throw it. <laughs> so Wirtz is tired, you know, uh, and so now he's got to be accurate with his throws and things like that. So Georgia Southern will line up for a 56-57 yard field goal. Interesting. They need 19, so why not? And a timeout called on the field. By Georgia Southern, huh? So Tyler Bass will line up. Talked with Eagle head coach Chad Lungsford on Thursday and Asked him, what is the range for Tyler Bass? And he said, if you ask Tyler, he's going to say 75 yards. That's correct. He said, if you ask me, I'm going to give you a different answer. Yeah, and he's about right what he said. He said 60, didn't he? He sure did. So this is right around makeable range for the field goal kicker, Tyler Bass. Remember, he missed his first field goal of the season earlier in the first quarter. A 26-yard yeah. field goal that hit off the right upright. He has the most made field goals in the Sun Belt this season with 12. Well, the biggest thing, you know, 57 yards or 56 yards. And the other thing you've got to watch, you've got trips up top. So could be some fake if they all eligible numbers, and I think they are. But I doubt it. They're probably going to kick the ball. Ryan Langan is the long snapper. He played six-man football at Riverside High School in Nebraska. This kick definitely has the distance, and this kick is... Off the mark, wide to the right, but wow, he definitely had the leg for it. He had the leg. He had the leg for sure. And that probably ices it. Yeah, with 153 left in the game, ULM in front, 44 to 25. Want a timeout? No timeouts for ULM. Georgia Southern is down to one. That's what I thought. But what a what a huge victory this is for ULM if they hold on for the final 153 unless a miracle happens here for Georgia Southern. But had the week off, yep, and it benefited the Warhawks in a huge way. Well, I think they're playing like they everybody known they're capable of playing. They have an extremely explosive offense, and then hats off to the defense. This is the third week in a row that I think the defense has played really really good. So. I'm, I'm happy for, for the, the, all the Warhawks. You know, I know how hard they work, and, and I know how hard it is to win games in college football. So good job by ULM. Derek Gore with a carry. So you mentioned the defense. What do you think has been the biggest difference the last three games? Well, I think they went back to basics. I think they, they, they started calling things that, that, uh, that, they, that they wanted to call in the spring and the, uh, summer and the fall. And, you know, they're just doing things over and over and over again until they do it so much that they, they can't get it wrong. So I think they went back to basics and just, just tried to not, you know, not rethink the will a little bit. So I think, I think they've done a good job and, and good for them, man. Good for them. ULM is looking at maybe one, maybe two more plays as Evans takes a snap and takes the knee with 59 seconds left. Unless Georgia Southern called a timeout. Clock is stopped with 59 seconds. So the Eagles do call their third and final timeout. So after the knee, it's third and six. So ULM will have to run a couple more plays. 44 to 25, ULM. Huge day for the Warhawks. Tied for first in their division, in the West Division with their in-state rival, Louisiana Lafayette. And so with Louisiana dropping on the road today at Troy, 
ULM will find themselves in sole possession of first place. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They got to play uh, South Alabama next week, and you know, uh, this is going to come down to it. They got they got the people they got to beat ahead of them. So, so on the other side for Georgia Southern, only second loss of the season. The other one was to Clemson. First loss in the Sun Belt. Where do the Eagles? Well, they got go Troy next week. So, it's a tough ball game. So they beat Troy. That puts a three-way tie in the East. So you know, it, it, it's it's far from over. Which is, you know, I'm sure the commissioner when he set all these brackets up is kind of what he was hoping. You know, so, and it's good that the I know everyone's been thinking the the West wasn't as good as the East, and all of a sudden now you got ULM that beats the leader in the East by two touchdowns, 16, well, 19, 19 points. So, you know, this is a statement game for ULM, and it's kind of what people expected of them all year. Flag down on the field. This will be a delay of game. So it's fourth down for ULM. Delay of game. Offense. Now we have to figure out. Georgia Southern wants ULM to accept it and, and punt it away or how they want to handle this. But nonetheless, nine seconds. And this is the first season that the Sun Belt goes with the division play championship game in the Sun Belt. Do you like that, the championship game? I do. Game? I do. I really do. I think it will bring attention uh, to the Sun Belt Conference on the national uh, level. So I think it was a good idea by the, uh, by the commissioner and his staff to do that. Another punt coming up. This is only the second punt of the afternoon for ULM as Kennedy is back deep for Georgia Southern and signals fair catch and it actually deflects off of him and ULM will try to recover it inside the 30. No signal yet, but this will be the final play of the game. What a victory for ULM over Georgia Southern. There you see the point totals from quarter to quarter, but 44 to 25, final score. What a win for ULM. Yeah, it really was. It was a statement win for uh, Coach Viator and the staff, and probably the biggest win since uh, they've been got here three years ago. On Military Appreciation Day, Caleb Evans with a big day along with Marcus Green. Two touchdowns of the afternoon for Marcus Green and ULM knocks off Georgia Southern 44 to 25 and the Warhawks find themselves in sole possession of first place in the West Division. So for Manny Michelle, I'm Graham Doty saying so long from ULM where the final score, ULM defeats Georgia Southern 44 to 25. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archive on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.